Okay, so question 40 is another for question that you don't have to be able to do. Um, but, I mean, you, you should be able to do it. What angle does y equals 3x minus 2 make with the x-axis? Okay, so let's have a look at this thing. It starts at negative 2, and it's going to slope at 3. So that means it goes over 1, up 3. And then it goes over 1, up 3. And then it goes over 1, up 3. And it does that forever. So that's what we're really looking at here. So it doesn't matter what it cuts through here with. All it really matters is that this triangle, well, let's zoom in here a bit. So if this is our x-axis, wherever it crosses through, this triangle is going to go over 1 and up 3 from this angle here. That makes sense? Because the slope is 3 over 1, so it's rising 3 as it's running 1. And this is the x-axis, which is the horizontal line on the bottom of that triangle. So if you want to solve that theta, you could label this with O, H, and A, and use your trigonometry. So the tan of theta is equal to 3 over 1. And then to solve for the angle, we always use an inverse. So the tan inverse of 3 over 1, shift tan of 3, theta is equal to 71.56 or 71.6 .6 degrees. Easy enough? It won't be on your exam. Um, wait, oh yeah, that's for my class. I can't make statements for any other teachers. Okay, so solve these variables. This also, this is like grade nine stuff, so it's more like a warm up. You should still do it, but it won't be on your exam. It won't be on my exam. Okay, so you got 55 degrees in here. This is an isosceles triangle, so that means that this is also 55 degrees. Cool with that? Now, inside a triangle, angles always add up to 180. So 180 minus 55 minus 55 gives us x, which is equal to 70 degrees. Now, the y value is along a straight line here. So if that straight line is 180 degrees, 180 minus that 55 there gives you what's left over. And yeah, I probably shouldn't need a calculator for this, but I just want to check because these are solutions. I want to make sure I'm doing it right. So that 55 and 125 add to 180, so that's how you deal with straight lines. Anytime something's broken with a straight line, you can subtract the angle from 180 to get the other angle. All right, now over here is a little bit more difficult. So what I know about these lines, well, let's look at this thing here, this dot right here. If I take 180 degrees and I subtract that dot, I get this plus this, because inside the triangle adds to 180. Now also there's a straight line there. So if I take 180 and subtract that dot, I get this as well, which means that these things are actually equal to each other. And that's how I'm going to solve this. I'm going to take 40 degrees plus 2x plus 5 degrees, and I'm going to set that equal to 6x minus 35 degrees. So this is equal to these two together, because the triangle's 180 and this straight line's 180. Okay, now. In order to solve that, I'm going to move all my numbers over here, so I get from all my degrees, so 40 degrees, 5 degrees, plus 35 degrees when it comes over, 6x minus 2x when it comes over, so 40 plus 5 plus 35 goes to 80, and this side goes to 4x, and then divide off the 4, and 20 is equal to x. And I should say 20 degrees. So that's how you solve this one. It's kind of tricky. It's really more grade 9 stuff than grade 10 stuff. So you should be able to do it, but it's not in our grade 10 curriculum. OK, 42. This stuff you definitely have to be able to do. So some similar triangles here. Now, in order to do similar triangles, you are going to put things over top of each other. So correspondings go over top of each other. Now, what I would suggest you do with this thing, when you get these double triangles, I'd really suggest you just draw the two triangles. There's your big triangle. There's your little one. There's your big one. OK, now little triangle is just 5 and 7. Big triangle is 11 on the bottom. And what's there on the side? How long is that? Well, it's 5 plus x. OK, so there's where my x is. Now, I'm going to put the x over its corresponding side. So 5 plus x, that big side, goes over this little side, 5. And then 11 goes over 7, because I'm doing big over little. And then I multiply this up, and I get 5 plus x equals 55 over 7. 
Now, if you want, you could multiply the seven up here as well, but I'm not going to. I'm gonna kick the five to the other side. So x is gonna to equal to 55 over seven minus, now what's five as a fraction of seven? Well, 35 over seven. So this is five as a fraction over seven. So x then equals 20 over seven. Okay, next one, b. This one's a little bit easier because I've just got the x. Obviously the x goes over 14 because these two sides correspond. So x goes over its corresponding side 14. And now little's over big, so I do little over big again. I do three over, wait, three over what? Three over 15 and three over 10. Well, let's check. These two angles are the same because they're opposite angles. Now by z pattern, this arc is the same as this arc. So these two sides correspond and these two sides correspond. So three is actually corresponding with 10. Now, cross multiply that up. X equals 14 times three is 42 over 10, divide top and bottom and by two, and X is gonna equal 21 over five. Looks good. So, similar triangles, they'll be on there. These things, they won't be on there. Question 40, it won't be on mine. Now, it might be on your teachers though, so good practice.